you ready? <laughs> okay. So we just stopped um, in the moment that we, we were thinking about the Museum of Arte Util, no? The, at the Panabe, the Mo A'u, that is nice. And uh, actually, um, well, it has been a really challenge to, to think about this, this exhibition and, and in part about because it means for us uh, think about the institution itself too. So it was more about to think uh, how an institution as a Panave Museum can uh, transform itself in a useful, in a, uh, util uh, mechanism or uh, space. So we were really thinking about the position and the role of not just uh, the art in the society, but the institutions in relation with the art in the society. So it was really to, to try to think uh, how to show this kind of practices uh, and at the same time, how to propose the public to become, uh, to transform in users and how to inspire them to, to, to tell us how to use the museum, how they would like to use it. So uh, it, had been, it has been a really tricky uh, process and uh, we have been through it uh, with a lot of discussions and uh, not just the, the curatorial team at the museum with uh, yeah, Annie Fletcher and Nick Eikens and, uh, and uh, all the research team that is Alessandra Savio de me. And now uh, we are, have been working too uh, from a certain point, almost from the beginning with Drysdale, that is a group, in English group that is completely related with, with this kind of practice too. So in all this process, we just had this voice of Tania Bruguera uh, that she always tell us, I want to transform the museum in the Museum of Arte Util. So uh, the old building of the Fanave, that is where all the, the um, temporary exhibitions are show it, uh, it's uh, going to, to transform in the Museum of Arte Util, no? in the use. So, what do we want to do? Well, uh, with the museum, uh, with the Art Util Museum, we would like to provide a space where the exception becomes the rule. So, uh, to go back to society and think that it is possible, we really want to inspire the artists and we really want to inspire the public and uh, the society itself to let, let them let them think about how um, they can change the things or how the, the things can be changed, let's say. And uh, that's, um, this is like this about uh, what Tania is trying to, to propose all the time because uh, in all the discussions we, we have gone in different uh, spaces and different uh, scenarios, we got a lot of, of reactions that, uh, for example, uh, a lot of people consider that art Util could be considered uh, or call it as a, a charity work. And uh, from the beginning it's like, no, it's not charity, it's really trying try to, it's, we are trying to, to change the status quo, no? to change the situation. And uh, what is more criticized is about this, this uh, and it's really something that is there and it's true, that could happen. That uh, what about the Arte Util use it as an instrumentalized in a certain way um, for the neoliberalism? Because it's, it's some, sometimes the arts are giving solutions to problems that the system cannot provide. The solution. So sometimes it's like, are you helping them? You know, <laughs> it's like you are not against. But actually, it's not true. What this uh, Arthur is trying to do is all the time to uh, criticize the neoliberalism. It's a reaction to the system right now. And what it's doing is uh, to really use, they are really using the the structures created by the neoliberalism. And the, the art util is, is using the, the art world market and the system that is uh, functioning right now to try to transform uh, the things and to try to give new strategies or tools to change 
the situation. And um, what uh, we are trying to, to show in our exhibition is that uh, it makes uh, what seems impossible, possible. So it's uh, quite of, of uh, an amazing, uh, beautiful uh, proposal. And um, as I, I told from the very beginning, it's something that we, we want to repeat, and repeat, that is like uh, the art utility imagines, creates and implements socially beneficial outcomes that makes the world work differently, no? And then we just came with a big issue uh, for an uh, exhibitions makers, let's say. How do you show these practices? How do you take a process that happened in the city with the real people, with the community, uh, people that is not uh, related with the art world uh, at all? How do you put it, it inside a museum without to killing the project itself, without to, to object, objectualize it, I don't know how to express it, but without to, to, to transform it in an object, without to, to uh, make this kind of, um, how do you call it, without to put again the Duchamp uh, fountain in the museum. How do you do that? So we were thinking a lot about these projects and, um, and how to define it. Because um, as I told you at the very beginning, we made this uh, really simple classification that was just based in the fields that it were working. And even at that moment, it was super difficult to, to classify the project just in one category because uh, there were no projects that were just social or just economical or just pedagogical. A lot of projects are all together. So now we were thinking like, okay, um, what we want to show, what we want to reach with this exhibition. So the, we came out with this idea that um, what we want really to do is to give uh, this kind of inspiration, no? We really want to show the project as inspiration and as models to, to follow or possibilities. So we came up with the idea of the strategies. So it was like, because in fact, if you think in the projects all the time, they are using the strategies and different strategies. And uh, always the, the artists are using uh, maybe not just one, a lot of strategies. But sometimes these strategies are so important that they really uh, get, gives them the possibility to reach the, the goal. So they do it through the strategy. So we started to think about the strategies and we thought, yeah, we have it. We are going to do an exhibition about the strategies. So what we are showing at the Museum of Arte Util is a bunch of strategies that the artists of Arte Util practitioners have been uh, working on for a uh, yeah, long, long time. And as we have this archive that is composed but but projects that are coming from the history of art. We are combining uh, projects from the history of art and we are talking about uh, projects starting in the 19th century with projects that are happening right now and with projects that are happening in the city. And um, what we are doing at the end is giving, um, we want to make this kind of, 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 of um, way or, or let's say um, we are we are giving the people the possibility to to imagine what if they use these strategies okay so we we'll start with the use it yourself that is completely in relation with the with what this we said at the beginning no the do it yourself culture and it plays completely the emphasis in the user so it's like you are the protagonist of this exhibition actually so we are um, thinking in projects that are from the very beginning, what they are doing is, is demanding this, this um, use, no? They are uh, really proposing the people, use this system, use this platform, use me, you know, and do whatever you want. So um, sometimes it's, this is in a good way, let's say, in a politic way, but sometimes it's even with, with um, uh, subversive tactics. So we start to, to deal, and that's something that I think that is really interesting from the Art Util, with this kind of, of, of different uses 
that the artists can do, can, can make about the society and the structures. So sometimes it's in, in a political correct way, but sometimes not. So um, we have the institutional repurpose. And this strategy is really interesting because it's when the artists really are uh, aware about the power of, uh, of institutions and they, they change their, their, their function. So they use and transform the structure and uh, they repurpose the institutions and, uh, and doing it, uh, they are really um, uh, proposing to kind of, of think differently about the institution itself. So they are really uh, inspiring the people to think about the different ways to use the institution or different possibilities for this institution that already have been there for a long time and just use it in that way. So um, we have like a reuse that can be bureaucratic or, or in an operative way or in, even in conceptual way. So um, we said that uh, that means that uh, in a certain point Art Util, sometimes they don't reject, the projects don't reject the institution. What they are thinking is how to use it in a better way. And, um, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. So what we are, we are uh, all the time um, proposing with the projects is uh, uh, something that is really interesting for the Vanabe that I told you from the very beginning is really to think uh, how we can use the art institution, no? or use it in a different way, or, or misuse it in a way. Let's see. And uh, we have the illegal, that I love it. Um, the illegal is, um, <laughs> is this gray, gray area that is uh, between what is uh, legally considered, so it's, it's written in the law, and what is not. So sometimes uh, there are situations that um, are not defined by the law. So as they are not defined, they are not illegal. They are not legal, but you know that they, they are not illegal neither. So it's like uh, in the middle. And there are a lot of artists that are completely specialized <laughs> in working in this field. Of course, to work in this field, they need a lot of, of, of help. And they, they need a lot of, of collaboration of lawyers and, uh, you know, uh, because they, they don't know in any case how is. But uh, that is really interesting because you even can, can see how they um, are changing the situations um, even to, between countries because uh, it, the, the frame, the legal frame is changing. So they are trying to readapt what they are doing, you know, in a country where it was illegal and the other country, it's not so illegal, it's more <laughs> illegal. So it's like, okay. And um, we have uh, really uh, different examples, no? But um, I mean, even though we have uh, examples that the projects that have been created as a kind of, of of, of um, an imagination, an utopic, um, utopic, utopical project like NSK from Erwin, the, the passports, that I don't know if you know about this project, but uh, basically wait, they, they decide to, to start this um, uh, propositional nation. So what's not a real nation, but they uh, start with these uh, embassies all over the world and they uh, design a passport and they have a flag and ask them. So they really were into uh, imagining a new, a new land, a new nation. But uh, they never uh, proposed it like for real. But what happened was like in, in, um, in Africa, um, you can apply from all, uh, every, every part in the world, you can apply for the passport via the website. And in Africa, a lot of, a lot of countries, a lot of citizens ask for the passport and they start to move through the through the borders of Africa uh, with this passport. So uh, it became something that was uh, used 
in a real, but they never, you know, they never intended. So it's a kind of, of a special um, example, but it's really interesting to see uh, how even uh, this gray area is used it, uh, in a ways that you couldn't imagine, even the artist uh, couldn't imagine, no, in, at that moment. And um, we say that uh, there are other, yeah, that is all the thing that uh, the, the is related with this uh, strategy that is that uh, using the art frame, sometimes you can do things that are not so um, permitted or are not so allo uh, allowed for everyone. Let's say that if you call it art and you frame in a project, sometimes you get more um, possibilities to do things that are um, socially incorrect or or are like, uh, let's call it, not, not uh, politically correct and uh, completely illegal. And that's something that happen, happens a lot. I will show you some examples later. But uh, in a certain way, that is a good example, as I told you at the very beginning, that uh, how Arte Util is using a lot even the art structures to give uh, beneficial outcomes to the society. So it's really using all the tools that they have. And the artists um, have a lot of tools in that way because the art, the art field is really established now. So you really know how to go through the institutions that you know, you know how to, how to get so really are super smart, let's say, <laughs> to use it in that way. And then we have uh, the open access. So this is a strategy this is uh, mainly oriented to give the people uh, uh, free knowledge, information, to, uh, material to use it. And it's something that, uh, that start uh, from Ruskin in the 19th century and uh, with Joseph uh, uh, Bayes about uh, the free international university. But this is something that is happening still now and now we are more and more uh, in this culture because uh, we have uh, the uh, copyright and the, co the cultural commons and uh, we have uh, the social media that is all about sharing. So, in fact, it's one of the strategies more used uh, in many different ways to, to give the, the society to bring these uh, this beneficial outcomes, to really reach the beneficial outcomes. And uh, we have the space hijack. And this is um, an amazing strategy because it's about, uh, as the name says, is about to take over, to occupy and use the space. So it's uh, a lot about, um, uh, in certain cases, it's a lot about clandestine actions to take a space. But uh, it's a lot of uh, about, uh, and that's something that we have a lot of historical examples, it's a lot of, of the citizens taking the urban space to use it in a different way. We have examples from the from the, um, the historical field to to transform the space into into for agri agricultural or educational uh, means like uh, green guerrillas or the farm. And uh, but we uh, have still these tactics that are used and now uh, they are really really like. Uh, in their moment, I mean, after all the Occupy movements, no, so the social ones, we, we cannot uh, deny that it's completely related with the arts. Even we cannot deny that in that Occupy movements there were a lot of artists. So it's something that is really um, happening and it's one of the strategies that the artists use it uh, many often in many different ways. I will show you some examples, but uh, we have from the Occupy the institution or Occupy the urban space, but we have to a kind of, of mix of do yourself and Occupy <laughs> the space. So yeah, you will see that all the strategies are completely um, uh, mixed. 
And when we have a controversy, that is not a strategy itself, but it's something that is happening a lot. And we think that it's important to show it in the museum, and, it's, and we think that it's important to discuss about this project, because we think that these projects are giving the possibility to, to go through the concept and of Arte Util, and to give us the possibility and give the people the possibility to, to to make a reflection, to think really thoroughly about the, this kind of practices. So we, we decided that we want to have a room of controversies. And everybody is invited to come to the museum and discuss about the <laughs> any project that you feel that, that should be there. And actually, um, we are talking a lot about, uh, yeah, as we, we have mentioned before, that uh, in fact, in all around the social practice, you have this kind of, of boundaries that uh, yeah, the, the press are a real, really nearby the boundaries of, of instrumentalization, as I told before, no? or uh, how to use the, the symbolism. And, and, um, and um, there have been a lot of critics about a bunch of projects that have been you know, uh, between these boundaries. And um, actually, we have a lot of projects uh, that I think I mentioned too, that have been just uh, made, made as prototypes, because they couldn't go to the society for many different mm, meanings, no? But at the end, they, they kept like, uh, like, like uh, in the art world, just, you know, in the galleries, and, the, and that's something that uh, it's, it's something that we, we really want to discuss, you know, because it's like at the end uh, you have done Arte Util or not? Because uh, you did it the, with the means to go to the society, but at the end it's not. So what is happening, no? Or we have uh, projects that uh, are really controversial itself because their issue, or what are you trying to do with the project? I, have, I think that I have two examples that we will see in a while that are pretty, pretty interesting and controversial. And we have uh, other strategy that is um, really hard, um, I think, to follow, but is uh, really effective at the end. That is the legislative change. And it is really when the, when the art projects have been working through a situation that they really think that uh, has to be changed completely from the legal for the legal frame. So they're really um, trying and um, struggling to, to, to reach that goal. And uh, fortunately, we have uh, some praise that they did it, and it's uh, pretty amazing to see it. So um, it's really, uh, in this case, it's really a mix of activism and art. So it's something that you cannot uh, divide. In this uh, strategy, you cannot be uh, willing to make a le legislative change and not uh, feel that you are a little bit activist too, because you really are taking actions to change you know, the reality completely. And uh, of course, reforming capital, you know, in the moment that we have, and um, let's say that if you, you look at the archive and the history of, of Arte Util itself, you could see that it's completely a reaction to the economy and the structures and the liberalism and then the neoliberalism and before against the capitalism. It's uh, really a reaction to the system, established system of economy. So what they are uh, changing, there is completely a lot of creative ways to change the, the, the capital, no? to change the, this kind of markets and to, to start to, to think completely differently uh, about uh, how to deal with uh, exchange of materials or knowledge or, and think that uh, maybe could be other ways of economic uh, uh, exchange and uh, other thing in other ways of, of I don't know, of um, living, I mean. But not, uh, in a, in, as I all told you from the very beginning, it's not, it's not trying to, these, these strategies are not trying to change the society at all. It's not like, uh, let's change everything, let's change the system, let's change the, no. 
what they are trying to do really is to propose uh, solutions, concrete uh, possibilities to concrete uh, communities or for uh, against concrete situations. So something that uh, that always could be um, taken by by others and implemented, no? So let's see examples that I think that is uh, more uh, interesting, and I like it more. So <laughs> uh, for use it yourself, I I choose two examples. Uh, the one is Yo Mango. Yo Mango is a Spanish uh, group of people, let's say, that uh, combines artists and uh, different professionals. And they start in Barcelona and, uh, in 2002. And basically what they are uh, proposing from the very beginning is um, to think about the kind of reforming capital completely. So this is uh, what I told you at the beginning, that uh, we have found a lot of strategies in the same project, but uh, it's, a, it's thinking completely differently about the economy and it's against the system that uh, the, act, the actual systems of the big, big marks that are, um, um, that are um, producing um, uh, clothing and uh, materials all over the world with a lot of merchant, merchant franchises, franchises. And, um, uh, that they are really um, selling, let's say, um, using their, their powerful position and they are putting prices and everything, you know, uh, using their, their powerful position. So it's not, uh, compl it's not against uh, all the shops and it's not against all the system. It's, a, it's just really focused on, on that the big names in the market and actually what they are proposing is uh, change the idea of, of the life. They said that um, it's like, um, why I should pay? Why not I can take it? So what they are proposing, yes. So, but it's not about the stealing, I mean. It's about the stealing, but it's not, because it's not just about the stealing, let's say. It's about to, to change, um, really the, um, the system and change the position of the user and the consumer. You know, it's, ag it's against the position of the consumer that you are just buying and buying and buying. It's not uh, uh, proposing the people to, to go to the shop and, and take everything. It's really thinking more uh, in a way of, of change, uh, just take what you need, you know, and uh, really be, you know, r just break with this uh, s slavery, you know, of the marks. So what it is, is that they have uh, built this website where uh, if you have any advice on how to do it, you can put it there. So it's a kind of sharing of uh, strategies or uh, systems to take the things for free. And um, apart, they have been doing a lot of campaigns and they have developed this uh, uh, funny and beautiful clothing that is uh, to use in a different way. And um, the idea has, uh, as I told you, uh, has to start in Barcelona, but actually now there are a lot of, of cities in Spain and uh, in Argentina, in Chile, in Mexico, in Italy, in Germany. So there are people all over the world uh, uh, practicing Yo Mango. That actually means it's quite funny. It's uh, completely related with the mark, okay? That we all know and we all have in our head and it's in the, <laughs> the logo actually, the letters. But actually it's a kind of a funny um, ga game of, of words because it's uh, in Spanish, uh, mangar is, uh, is, uh, is like the slang for, for stealing. Okay, so it's I still is what it means your mango. Okay, <laughs> but um, it's completely use yourself. It's not uh, they never you know they it's a people for them. They always say this is a game. I mean, if we are not telling anyone do it, do it. If you want to do it, you are gonna do it. But if not, it's okay. We just give you the tools if you want to implement it. 
And then we have, uh, I, I choose this example, that this, um, from Wuhan Closure, that is a group that we are, uh, tomorrow I would like to analyze more uh, locally. But um, I, I choose this example because it's in Italy and I thought that <laughs> uh, it's a completely different um, idea of using it yourself. But in fact, it's a kind of because um, it was developed in 1994, and uh, he were invited by the uh, uh, the little town of Civitella de Agliano. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it well. And um, apparently, uh, when they were invited uh, for uh, an annual um, um, uh, festival uh, that happens every year, uh, that they invite artists, uh, international artists, to do uh, projects. When they were invited, um, they discovered that um, apparently the 25% of the population is uh, elderly, because it's really nearby Rome, and uh, you know the young people is going to the city and left. Uh, so uh, the town. So, uh, but the fact they had this. Um, Apparently, the council had the project already developed to, 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 to build, actually it was already done, it was built a, a, a social center for the elderly people, but they never finished it. So just kept there like, uh, you know, forgotten. And when Waha Closure uh, went there, they decided that they really want to to finish this and to give it to the, the population. And they... Um, the point is that, um, yeah, the council didn't uh, want to do it. It was not in their uh, annual plan, let's say. And what they did was like, okay, uh, they uh, make a, um, an article, they publish an article in the local newspaper telling the people their plan. I was like, we want to, to put this building in function and we really want to, to start to, to build it and to finish it and to give it to you and we are asking for participation, so anyone who wants to participate is invited. So uh, the, uh, uh, the elder, elder, elderly population was really pleased, and they really wanted to do things. So uh, what they think, what they did was uh, they uh, decided that the one closer just paint this beautiful view of the city, like uh, the old side of the city, and they uh, make like um, an open call to the people for just take a picture with this uh, view. So we are kind of, you know, uh, fundraising with that money, but at the same time you, you will have a beautiful postcard, you know, for your friends and family. And uh, everybody was super pleased, so you can see that everybody was participating. And so what they did is like uh, they make a little bit of a, sk a space hijack too, because they put uh, they took one of the rooms of the council and they put their uh, freezer and uh, actually uh, without uh, permit and was like a kind of action that means for the council that uh, was like hey wake up because we are doing this project with uh, with or without you. So the council just start to think okay maybe we should think something about it because I think that it's going to happen. And at the end, um, uh, they, they, they got the money so all together, so they just finished the project and that was not so much what they had to do. And uh, the elderly people, uh, they uh, proposed to the council that the, it, uh, they will be, will be responsible for the, for the um, take care of the space, so it was like you don't have to, you know, to care, you don't have to put someone there, you don't have to pay someone to be there, we really want to, to use it and we are going to take care of it, so it's all for us, we just do it by, by ourselves. So, and it's working. So, uh, what about institutional repurpose? Okay. Uh, two different examples that are uh, similar in a way, but uh, quite different. That is one of them is uh, again working closure. All the examples that we are we are checking today, tomorrow we can analyze more profoundly. Okay, and, and more. <laughs> so the one, the first one, the language school for Kosovo refugee camp. It uh, happened uh, for the biennial, the Venice biennial in 1999. Um, uh, Guangzhou was invited by the Austrian Pavilion 
to be their, their representatives. And uh, as they used to do, um, they just check, you know, the situation around the, the city at that moment. And uh, that was the, the, the Kosovo war at that moment. And uh, in fact, um, they were thinking that um, if you check in the map, uh, it's not so far from Venice. Uh, and actually, there was a huge problem at that moment with the um, with the refugees because apparently um, a lot of uh, joyful uh, Jones uh, refugees they got uh, shelter uh, with with uh, families in Macedonia, but they couldn't go to school at that point because they were refugees and was like this is the war you are not you know located here is just temporary so they were not uh, assumed for the structure of the school scholar system in Macedonia so they they haven't any any school so they decide um what closely decide that they what they want to do was to use the biennial to build uh, some schools some language schools in Macedonia for these uh, Kosovo Albanian refugees. So uh, what they did is like uh, they got their really huge uh, financial support because it was the biennial. And what they did it was to, to um, they, they did it in different ways. For one side, they got, uh, could you imagine that the 200,000 visitors of the biennial could help? And they felt like uh, really good because they, they did it for the good deal, you know, <laughs> like, uh, wow. And uh, at the other side, um, they really, uh, they, they rented with that money of the entrance with the, um, the pa pavilion, they rented uh, seven spaces, like uh, classrooms, and they, they, uh, the furniture was provided by the Vienna City School Board because Wuhan and Closure are uh, um, based in Vienna. And apart, uh, apparently a lot of publishers, companies in Austria uh, and Italy, they, uh, they offer them uh, all the teachings, the teaching materials for free. And uh, apart, the University of Vienna is sponsored with 20 computers for the classrooms and uh, uh, said, because I have all the information here. Uh, an 18 meter long uh, semi trailer truck uh, paid for Caritas came with all, with everything to Macedonia. So they built these schools and, uh, to, in the summer of 1999. And uh, they say to, to, pay, to pay the salaries of the teachers and the rent, they make, uh, yeah, they, they got a lot of. of, of support from organizations like Culture Content and Rotary Club of Vienna and the Women's Initiative Against World and uh, the Bubik company. I mean, a lot of companies were, were involved and they got like uh, 48,000 euros to, to pay this. And apart, they said, uh, again, using the biennial as a venue to, to fundraising, what they did was uh, as part of the, of the um, of the pavilion, as you can see, they they built uh, yeah their office because that was uh, they always use the the institution that is inviting them as office, and uh, part they did this this box that you can see uh, to to give it for for a number of lottery. So the point is that uh, if you went to the the pavilion, uh, you you could buy um, one of these uh, numbers of lottery, and you got this back that was like a kind of a uh, 20 euros, and they say that uh, you got these surprise packs <laughs> with a lot of uh, variety of Austrian and Italian companies, uh, you know, objects. So that is a kind of interesting uh, use of a uh, repurpose of the institutional uh, uh, space, like the biennial, no? That everybody knows it's really. And the other, the other project that I chose to show you that is from the archive is other one that is uh, he used the biennial too, and it's uh, of Superflex. And uh, what they did is uh, they did the Guarana Power uh, project that started in 2003, and basically they were invited to for an arts 
institutions to do a project in the, the area of, of the Amazon and uh, in Brazil. And they, um, they met this, this uh, cooperative of farmers who were specialized in the cooperative of, of growing the Guarana. They went there, they had the problem that um, the big companies uh, working with this kind of, of uh, drinks uh, uh, had made uh, an accord to, to reduce the, the price that they, they, they were paying for the, for the material, so the Guarana itself. And uh, while they were raising the price in the market, you know, of these kind of drinks. But the point is that uh, with that um, uh, situation, the, the farmers were, were losing like uh, the 80% of their, their um, profits. And uh, it, uh, it uh, was at that moment really a crucial situation because uh, they couldn't afford to, to maintain you know, the farmer and the plantations and, uh, and keep, keep alive, I mean, keep living and eating and, you know, so it was really a problem and uh, what they, what Superflex decided was to do a workshop with them, with this cooperative, like let's think about it, let's think about the project and uh, about the problem and, what, and about what solutions could be possible, no? So they, uh, at that moment, decided that, yeah, maybe the best solution was to try to, to find a way to produce a secondary product made with guarana, with this guarana that they were producing, and uh, a product that could be sold in different markets, that not to compete directly with the, competing directly with the huge marks, no? That we all know. So, uh, but uh, again, the, this cooperative, they, don't, they didn't have a capital and they didn't have uh, any, any um, manufacturing uh, uh, medium. So it was like, we cannot afford to do it. I mean, it's a great idea, but we cannot do it. And uh, Superflex uh, said, okay, actually, mm, what they propose is that uh, why not to use the art institutions to to work with this, this uh, problem or with this situation. So they decide, okay, let's imagine that we can do it. And it uh, started for the very beginning. This is the battle. So they used the first exhibition that they had after this um, in the Kiasma Museum in Helsinki. They were working with the lawyer of the museum to uh, find a way to show, the, to design the bottle of Guarana in a way that it was super, super similar to one of the design of the, of the main uh, marks that are in the market, selling the Guarana, but uh, in a different way. So it's different, but it's similar. So it's something that uh, really representational, you can see the similitude, you are getting the idea that it's the same, but it's not the same. So that was the first step. But then well, they um, designed the logo and they, um, a, in the biennial, they start to produce handmade Guarana power drink. And in the next gallery, you know, they just start to make the arrangements with the people that could make the, you know, the production. So in any step, from uh, 2003, they have been, uh, not all the time, but yeah, you can see that the project has been developing really slowly, but uh, going on. So actually now, is that there is a local brewery in the market that is producing the bottles, and the Warana Power is in, in some bars in, in Copenhagen. So <laughs> it's working, I mean, using completely different way the, the structures of the art world. And at the same time, they have done amazing exhibitions. You can see that showing the different steps of the project. Alega. Uh, as I told you before, we have uh, Nuria Well, that is one of the, the um, artists that were in the Cátedra de Arte de Conducta in La Habana with uh, Tania Bruguera. And we have a uh, Women on Waves uh, example from Rebecca Gompers. And um, Nuria Well, for example, she's completely specialized, let's say, 
in the alley gal and um, <laughs> because uh, she said that uh, that I mean as I told you at the beginning she said that her her materials to work is the reality you know and uh, the problems and the the legal mark and she's all the time confronting the um, the public the, the user the the spectator whatever uh, is in front of her projects uh, to trying to to push them to make to take a position you know uh, against or in favor of her actions and uh, she's really um, thinking about uh, issues that are you know uh, in the legal that the legal frames are are sometimes generating a social and uh, consequences and you know really in influencing or or affecting our perception of, of how the things should be or not no so she proposed do things that uh, she used to do things that um, that change completely or perception about this kind of legal uh, structures so for example this one is um, humanitarian aid and uh, it happens in Cuba, it starts in Cuba in 2008 and what she did basically is that uh, something that everybody knows that if you, you marry it with someone from other country you can get the nationality. So what she did was uh, she made an open call in Cuba to ask um, you know future husbands and she offered herself as a bride like a uh, you know, a young girl, a Spanish, young Spanish girl is looking for a... <laughs> yeah, and uh, because she wants to marry him and she wants to, to give him the, you know, the Spanish nationality. And um, as, as uh, she asked uh, to participate, uh, these guys should write a letter, a love letter, the most beautiful love letter. And uh, to decide who, who was the winner, she didn't do it by herself. What she did was she asked three young prostitutes from Cuba to make the selection. And uh, they decided that, uh, yeah, the winner was the one that you see, La Carta, the letter. And, <laughs> and uh, from that moment, she, she just told the, this guy everything about the project, that this is an artwork, it's not a real thing. We are not, uh, I mean, I'm not looking a guy to really be in love with him, you know, it's like I'm not looking a lover. I mean, this is a project and I want to let you know. So if you want to participate, it's okay. If not, it's okay too. And I'm, she compromised to him that if something goes wrong, I will pay you. I don't remember, but what's, what's a substantial uh, uh, amount? I think that was uh, 50,000 uh, euros, what she promised. Like, if something is wrong, I'm, you know, assuming my my responsibility exactly it's like no I'm not playing with you you know it's like so all the projects started at the moment they they as you see the pictures they they get married there in Cuba and um, and then they they came to Spain to Barcelona and uh, he was living there and uh, you know uh, they keep uh, all the process that you have to to follow to be considered uh, you know to get the nationality the papers and um, the citizenship, actually, yes. And at the end, uh, they got it. So he's uh, now a Spanish citizen. And uh, actually, now they can't uh, divorce because they already, you know, he's already considered as. Uh, and that's something that is going to happen with the Fanape. <laughs> so the project is going to finish in the, in the museum. And he's uh, signing the papers of divorce, and it's, uh, again she's uh, trying to to think about the immigration and the you know the social uh, consequences of immigration and the legal strategies to to get the citizenship or not and the possibilities you know and how we see it about. And the other one is um, it's great that it's from Netherlands with uh, women on weights and Rebecca Pompers. And uh, she started in 1999. So basically what they are doing, they have this ship that is uh, sailing through the wall and they are uh, providing uh, contraceptive pills, information, to training workshops about uh, 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 um, healthy uh, 
behaviors and uh, legal abortion services uh, in countries that is uh, forbidden, where the abortus is forbidden. And how they do it, because they are uh, practicing all this that they are doing, they are doing in, the, in the international waters. So they are outside of the territorial waters of these countries, so they can't, uh, re their register are a Dutch uh, uh, ship, it's a Dutch ship. So uh, what happens is that they, they, they can, it's like they are part of the legal system of, of Netherlands. So even if they are in international waters, they can do what is legal in Netherlands. So there are really a lot of women all over the world. A lot of, of bad practices and um, unsafe practice of abortions and everything. So they uh, they mix again the activists with the art. And uh, Rebecca Gompers is a doctor and is an artist. So it's a kind of, in, in that case, it's a kind of a, a combination. But of course, she sees all the time, uh, um, she's working with doctors, with uh, you know, specialists. So it's all the time, as I told you, that the artist did all the time. Uh, the artist is not, they are not becoming in other things. They are really doing in collaboration with professionals. So this is all the, of the or illegal uh, examples. And then we have uh, the room of controversy. That I think that uh, is very interesting. We have the two, I, I just chose two examples to show you today. That is Bulletproof Skin of Yalila Saidi and uh, Transborder Immigrant Tool of Ricardo Dominguez. And, um, the transborder immigrant tool um, was uh, made by, uh, for um, uh, Ricardo Dominguez and um, the um, just the name just got me. I have it has to come. It's a group <laughs> of two two different groups and that, that are working together, as you can see, the EDT and um, and the Bang Lab. And they were working in the University of San Diego, where, where Ricardo Dominguez is teaching, to develop this, uh, uh, this uh, device. And basically, as you know, the Mexican border is one of the longest and more problematic borders in the world. And uh, a lot of people, hundreds of people, is uh, crossing the world and it's uh, the, the border and it's dying in the process. No? So what they uh, decide to uh, design was uh, a kind of, of electronic disturbance theater, sorry. <laughs> the group of Ricardo Dominguez is electronic disturbance theater. Uh, and um, the point is that what they did is the, uh, they take a really um, cheap and simple model, one of the first ones that you could use with the GPS at the beginning of the GPS technology in the, in the mobile. Uh, and um, what they did was uh, to make a kind of software that uh, provide, uh, with the GPS, provide uh, um, different sources of, of water and uh, food and uh, places where the, where the police and the, you know, the frontier uh, military uh, should be. And um, let's say that they provide like this kind of tool for the people that was crossing the border to keep it safe, like at least for a while, because it's not uh, something that they, it was not, um, it was not to, to cross the whole border, what they told us at the very beginning. Uh, it's like the, it was not to, to keep it uh, on during the whole way, because it's too long. So it's like a really, really uh, safe, safety tool. If you are feeling lost, you know, if you really lost your way, you can use it to, to reconduce the way, but something that not permits you to walk through the whole border with it, you know? And apart the um, poetical, never uh, better, uh, component was that in fact uh, they had these uh, beautiful poems, it was poetry, and uh, it was more about uh, they were telling that they are giving the people not just the, the tool to save their body, you know, with water and everything, 
but with the poetry they try to give them a little bit of humanity because of that situation that you feel really alone, you know? So what's a kind of combination of this, uh, yeah, the metaphorical and the, and the real. And uh, what happened was that uh, this project, of course, uh, was developed, but uh, in a certain point, a certain point it came out and the public opinion was uh, crazy about it because it was like, what? And uh, Ricardo Dominguez and uh, its group, they were um, accused uh, to misuse the public funding for committing uh, illegal uh, actions. And uh, let's say, yeah, promoting illegal actions. And uh, they were uh, investigated and they were, I mean, uh, I just put it here because it's amazing. They were um, three different... Um, um, yeah, it happens to that term. They were investigated by three Republican congressmen, the FBI of cyber crimes and the University of California itself uh, started an investigation about the project. At the end, they, they couldn't prove uh, that they were uh, making like in an illegal way because uh, they, from the very beginning they, they still were working with uh, technology, you know, trying to develop uh, something, but it was not used. And that's what make it, make it more controversial because at the end, um, it, this, um, the electronic uh, transborder immigrant tool uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't used at the end. It was not used at all. But, um, and it's, it stayed like a, like a prototype. Now you have the actually the software is online and you can download it and you can add it the the information about different borders because you can't uh, use it for different borders in the world and um, it's there I mean it's open access right now but um, in the conversations with Ricardo Dominguez he he told me that at a certain point they even decide not to put it in the in the real, because uh, during the process of the investigations and everything that happens, uh, uh, was when when the situation in the border became more dangerous, and it was when the the war between the carters was super uh, yeah crazy, and even the the figure let's say of the coyotes, that the the people that is walking through the border with the immigrants, they just disappear because uh, that moment was even the carters who was uh, walking with the people, they were using the people to bring, you know, uh, drugs. So it was really most high, most dangerous at that, that the beginning. So they felt that it was too much. And they, they felt that if they give the people, they, they will give the people this, this tool, the people maybe will, will feel more, more safe. So they would do it more, you know, like uh, with a, uh, the security that the maybe was not so uh, dangerous, but at that moment was pretty more dangerous than the, at the beginning. So they decided not to put it, and then we are going back, if you think about, and that's something that we want to discuss, we are going back about this idea of the uh, ethics of the art routine, no? And uh, how at the end you decide uh, sometimes the projects are going, you know, far, or when you leave the project it can becomes transforming it in something else or not and if the artist should you know take the responsibility about the, what is going to happen after or what is going to happen with its project or not so and that it has a strong connection with the next project that we choose from the room of the controversies that is uh, Jalila Saidi that uh, she designed uh, she's a bio artist from Eindhoven she's an Eindhoven art and uh, and uh, she the, designed, uh, designed this, um, actually the project is called 2.6 grams, 329 uh, meters per second. But it's uh, uh, internationally well known as the bulletproof skin. And actually uh, these numbers are the maximum weight and uh, velocity uh, that uh, 22 caliber long rifle bullet uh, from, I see, um, can be, um, it's a, let's say it's the velocity and the, and the weight of the, of the 22 caliber long rifle bullets. And it's the, the kind of, of bullets that, the, that um, um, bulletproof vest 
come, come, you know, uh, protect you. So um, what happened is that Jalila um, saw different, different uh, articles. Uh, uh, she read about the the um, power of of and uh, strong of the sp the spider silk as a kind of of ma material that is really strong. And apart, uh, she read something about the um, the um, the milk of the goats, the goat's milk, as a kind of of of, of um, substance that can be you know used to combine a lot of of biological. Uh, uh, let's say substances. Sorry, because I'm probably telling super wrong. This is super scientific uh, <laughs> research. But basically, what she thought is like, uh, what what if if we trying to to build a, um, a kind of of skin with with uh, this uh, this spider silk, you know, like uh, really. And uh, she was uh, trying to find uh, partners to do this research and was like, uh, she told us that was quite crazy, was difficult. But at the end, she got the grant from the Forensic Genomics Consortium in Netherlands. And uh, she started to work with different uh, scientists and, uh, scientists and they, they developed and they built this uh, piece of a skin. And in fact, um, it works. It still, it's not working with uh, with um, with a real velocity bullet, but it, let's say it's in water, you know, and or in substance and materials that are going that, that are doing that the that the bullet is going like slowly. It's working. So it's something that is just starting. It's just a, um, an amazing discovery, and uh, at has had a lot of repercussion. You, you see, you can check on the internet, there is a, it has been uh, reviewed by the, all the more import, important or, or famous uh, media, news, CNN, uh, BBC, Al Jazeera. You can find uh, everyone, everybody's talking about it. And uh, until this moment, what she has done is, um, she decided to, to to take care about her idea, because she never saw from the beginning was not thinking to to provide a, a bulletproof skin. I mean, what she wants to do was to to think about the skin, the human skin, like a kind of a safety. She wants to talk about, uh, think about the safety, and the safety not just for bu against bullet, but against everything. No, how c could the human being be more, you know, a strong and um, and. Uh, after she finished, she got this call from the United, the United States uh, Army to buy the discovery. So, <laughs> and she's really, really aware about the importance of the ethics in the VO art. She said that, uh, in fact, is, if it's always important in relation with the VO art, it's even more important, it's more strong because you really are playing with, you know, dangerous material, let's say. So she said, uh, no, I don't want your money. And uh, the offer is still open. They say, OK, if you change your mind, you can, you know, call us. And what she did was she, she did, um, she buy the patent, she, she patented the, the idea. And now uh, at least she is completely aware that she cannot um, control the future of this discovery because it's science and uh, of course it's going to be used in a different way but at least she knows that uh, all the the team that was working with us with her the col her collaborators they all, all of them have uh, have uh, found new ways to use uh, this process so uh, the people that were working with her from the forensic genomics they they develop a new material to, to keep alive the, the skin for a long time. So they can use this in a in different way. There are a lot of future, um, yeah, they are thinking in can use this kind of, of a skin for all of the kind of damages, implantation, remember, you know, the, the yeah, the human, uh, when they, the people is born or a lot of damage in the, in the skin. So there are a lot of new developments 
in a good way, <laughs> let's say. And uh, I mean, but still there is presence that the, what she did is a bulletproof skin. So it's what is going to happen, we don't know. But it's something that we really think is controversial. I would love to discuss about it. And then space hijack. And I have to run because we are almost there. So <laughs> space hijack, uh, OK, we have uh, Santiago Cirujeda, again from Spain. And he started in 1996. And what he's doing is uh, recetas urbanas means urban prescriptions. So he has uh, a website where the people can uh, write him. He's an architect. And uh, he has a studio of architects. And the people is writing emails to him, sending emails to telling him uh, that there are a lot of special uh, concrete situations that are, for example, I mean, uh, we have a lot of kids in our neighborhood and we don't have any kindergarten or park to play and we really need it. And the council, they said that, you know, there, are no, there is no money and there is no, uh, you know, the area is not... Uh, um, considered as good to have a park or whatever. So uh, what they do is they propose a solution and they go there and work with the community that send the email so they develop uh, something using the uh, gaps in the law. So what he's doing all the time is uh, studying about the, working with lawyers again and uh, <laughs> He's studying about the municipal laws, you know, rules, and uh, he's all the time uh, working again in the legal degree area, and uh, and he's taking the space and using it. So as you see in the pictures, the the project, the, the kids in the in the dumpster, that was the first one that he did, and he was did was his neighborhood. And he was angry because they couldn't put the, the playground there for the kids. And he discovered that you can rent a, dumper, a, dump, a dumpster. You can rent it and put it there as you, are, you were building something. So what he did is like, he rented, he, put the <laughs> he paid the rent, and he just covered it and put the playground up. <laughs> And you know they are so it was like a, or for example there are a lot of of, of plots that are spaces that are uh, waiting for new buildings but they are they uh, keep like this like completely uh, without use for a long time and he decided uh, he proposed uh, like recipes the like prescriptions to use even the you know the the urban mobilier let's call it that you can find in in this kind of of areas that are preparing to be rebuilt and to make a playground there. Or, for example, the other picture is a kind of extension of your house. So like you need uh, more space, but you cannot uh, pay, you know, a reform or rebuilding or all the follow all the regulations that you have to keep to, to rebuild your house. So what you can do is put this kind of a structure that it seems that is something that you are changing. It seems that you are working in the, your house, but actually you are not. Actually, you have a new space in your house. So this is just some of the recipes. There are a lot. I mean, there are, for example, some the one that I especially like is uh, he made a video with um, Playmobil uh, figures explaining how to build uh, apartments, low rent apartments in the, in the roof of the buildings. So with the situation right now in Spain that the people don't have uh, money to pay uh, the, the rents and uh, actually the people need needs to, to, to have the communities needs to have uh, yeah, profits from get more money. So what they can do is to all together to build uh, an, uh, this kind of little apartment to rent in the roof. So somebody is getting a place to live and uh, this community is pretty happy because they are getting money every month from this apartment. So uh, something like this. And the other one is Nuria Well again. And what Nuria Well did is uh, with intervention is, uh, for example, um, with the situation, the crisis in Spain right now, you know that a lot of people that can, can afford to pay the mortgage. So at the end, the banks are taking care of the, the, the houses and the buildings they become the, the owners of the buildings and they are evicting the people, 
that is living there because they can't afford to pay the mortgage. So uh, that's happening a lot. And uh, what Nuria did is that um, there was a building where a lot of families uh, were going to be uh, evicted, and um, and, and they, they actually they were evicted. And uh, what they did was they, she, she uh, formed a cooperative of people uh, to rent a building, to rent, to rent a building, the, the, wall bu the wall building to the bank, and uh, legally uh, they uh, hire someone to put the doors out. And in, in the Spanish law, if you, are not, if, you, if you are not breaking the door, you are not breaking the house. So it's like uh, you can go inside and you can be there because you didn't break the door. So the houses without door are open. So the people that was living before there, they, they called it and they said, come back and go to your home because... And actually that happened for this project specifically in Alicante, but the, there is a... Um, organization, the, the Plataforma Contra la Hipoteca, this uh, platform against the mortgage, and uh, actually they, um, after this, they are using this kind of strategies, and they are uh, hijacking the spaces, you know, the buildings, to give it to the families that are being evicted. So at the end, it's like this, it starts like a new way to do the things, no? In an illegal, uh, let's say. A space hijack uh, strategy and open spaces, uh, open access. We have Mejor Vida Corp and ARC. Mejor Vida Corp is uh, from Minerva Cuevas, is from Mexico, and she has uh, she start uh, this website where she offers she was criticizing the corporations, the big corporations of the, the economical system. And what she did was she, she offered through this uh, website, and still she keeps doing, uh, different uh, services and, um, and products. So the products that they are, she is offering is, uh, for example, subway tickets from, the Mexi from Mexico City, or cheaper barcode stickers, for the, some pro products, uh, first net produ products in the different uh, supermarkets that you can go and put your sticker, your sticker so it's, it's cheaper for you. And uh, self stamp envelopes, I mean, a student ID cards, that is like, uh, because it really in Mexico it's working pretty well, that if you have the student ID, you can go inside every institution for free. So she's doing that, or the services as cleaning service or recommendation letters, because you need the, to get the word, you need the recommendation letters, so she's giving for you for free. <laughs> this is one. And the other one is the ARG. ARG is um, actually is a, a online create uh, library uh, that is, uh, is related as part of the project the public school. Uh, that is an open access to to learning, but the ARC uh, we think that is interesting because they are offering uh, PDF, PDF files for of theoretical, literary, and philosophical and artistic text uh, outside, completely outside of institutional frames and uh, even uh, this, despite of the copyright, uh, you know, restrictions. So and. Um, Inside the website, everybody that has uploaded in the, the text, they can't um, organize as they want. So it's like a really an artistic, let's say, composition, of, because everyone is, is making his own uh, library no? and sharing it. But uh, maybe the funny things and that you have to know to use it is that um, the A's, uh, are uh, repeated because every time that the, that the, that the page is attacked and uh, you know like uh, <laughs> they, they add a new A. So it's like, uh, when you open the, the web and you, you try to be to become member, you get this uh, RR doesn't exist. So you really feel that it's down again, but it's not, no one, because it's because, you know, they want that just the people that is really <laughs> interested. Yeah, yeah, get to it. And legislative change, and we are finishing. Um, legislative change 
Um, we have two examples, uh, beautiful examples. Augusto Boal is our it's a historical example that uh, I don't know if you know them, but uh, he's um, from Rio de Janeiro, and he starts in the in the 50s with a new form of theater because uh, he really thought that um, the life is theater, and or you know the um, we should use the theater in any ways possible, you know, because it's like the natural language for the human being. So uh, he he started with the with the theater forum, as he called it, the theater of the oppressed, and so uh, with this uh, theater, the audience became became um, inactive, like what he called spectators, actors, so expect actors, and um, he uh, used this this uh, theater forum to analyze the reality and the problems and trying to transform the reality. And what happened? Happened that uh, in 1993 he was cho chosen as very adorable, let's say, city councilman in Rio de Janeiro. And then he just developed a new uh, way of theater that is called the legislative theater. And it was to use these uh, techniques uh, about uh, the theater forum, but in a legislative way. So what the, he did is. Uh, to open, uh, dial open up a dialogue between citizens and institutional entities. And um, making this the process of, of, of uh, participation, inviting the people to uh, be active, uh, using the theater, telling their ideas, and proposing new laws. So um, from the very beginning, if you were participating in the in the legislative theater you you know that at the end a new law is coming because that is the 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 objective of the activity so you are really thinking about the problems that you have and the situation that you have the your context and you are trying to propose solutions and at the end one of that solutions that is uh, really everybody is is uh, agree with that solutions that is the solution that is proposing to the to the institution and they uh, when he was uh, city councilman councilman he develops uh, 13 uh, new laws with this uh, system and the other one is uh, an amazing example of Laurie Jo Reynolds that uh, she was uh, working from uh, 2008 in Chicago in relation with the Times Year 10 that is an institution, it's a high security prison that was established in Chicago and um, where the prisoners were really uh, um, in a really inhuman conditions, really like a high security, but uh, in fact um, uh, a lot of the prisoners were not, uh, let's say, high security prisoners, but uh, what happened is like the, the other prison was uh, in a rebuilding situation, so they moved a lot of prisoners to that uh, high security uh, prison and was temporary. But uh, when she starts to, to work with this project, already uh, have um, been uh, 10 years of this situation. So she started to work with the families, of the prisoners, with the prisoners itself, you know, in a certain way, and with a lot of lawyers and a lot of, of politicians and, and uh, community stakeholders that they really wanted to change this uh, situation and really wanted to, to close this prison. So they started a huge campaign with a lot of activities and different strategies to bring the problem to the society and to bring the problem to the parliament and to to really uh, trying to, to change the situation. And this, it's uh, amazing that we can tell that this year, in 2013, in January, the prison was closed. So they got what they, they were looking for. And it's amazing because actually they are still working a lot with the situation of the prisoners and everything, but at least the main objective was done. So it's an amazing example, I think. And uh, reforming capital. <laughs> okay, uh, reforming capital. Uh, we want to show you two projects. Uh, this uh, Jean van Hesbeek from uh, Netherlands, and uh, she has this project uh, called the Free House in Rotterdam in the Afrikaner Wijk, and uh, she started in 2009. And basically, what she did is uh, this is um, a neighborhood that is. Um, 
let's call um, in Dutch they say colorful neighborhood and this means there is a lot of cultures there and it's uh, mainly immigrants and uh, actually um, they have a market every week every two days a week I think or three days a week and it was the 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 principal economical activity in the in the neighborhood was the market and what she did was she did a huge research to try to connect with the people and to really know what were the the skills that uh, were there no in the neighborhood and she discovered that um, uh, through the market uh, she could build a community you know and uh, and to give them the possibility to improve their economies and to really um, uh, grow together uh, through the market, changing the market itself, improving the market itself, but at the same time she provides uh, three different ateliers. One was um, the cuisine area, so the cooking, so she invited all the cookers and the, you know, the, um, the people that was inter interested in learn how to cook. So she just uh, she gave them the possibility to do it and improve their skills, inviting you know professionals to teach them a lot. And at the end, they uh, started this kind of restaurant that I was working for a while. And apart, they had the the atelier that was about uh, clothing and uh, and sewing. And um, she invites a lot of of, of wives uh, that use not they are not used to work because it's like uh, they have to take care of the kids and the house and everything but actually she they have an am amazing skills about how to to sew in every and everything so she starts to to make this kind of of adapted uh, atelier so it was like adapted to their to their uh, timing because they couldn't you know work the whole day because they had to do a lot of things at home and with the kids. So it was like she was all the time looking for the possibilities to, to bring all together. And of course, again, she, she bring people to, to teach them, you know, um, new techniques and everything. And now uh, they develop the, the shop. So as you, you can see, one, one side is the atelier, the other side is the shop. And now they are even working to to developing collections for, for designers. So there are real designers that are bringing their collections that they want you, we really want you to produce it. And um, actually the next step that is because the, Afri the free house is almost done, let's say, they have created uh, uh, the connections between the neighborhood, you know, and the different cultures and uh, even the shops uh, and the business of the, the neighborhood was so good that now they are even thinking in a kind of cooperative of the whole neighborhood and actually uh, they, ha they, are, they are developing now logo, like uh, you know, a mark to make a distinction what is done in the neighborhood. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a quality uh, mark of what is done in the neighborhood and uh, they are now um, you know tr developing all these thinking in the future to to when when actually um champagne has week is almost done there it's like i'm almost finishing and then uh, the cooperative will keep it they you know keep going and uh, developing their own their own rules in relation with the their neighborhood and how they want to do it and um, rolling jubilee, that is, uh, that's something that happened um, during the Occupy Wall Street uh, movement. And is that uh, they make a group of uh, people that do with a lot of, of, of professionals, econo economists and, uh, and people related with the, with the capital and uh, structures right now. And they uh, start this project that was a strike debt. And it was calling Rolling Jubilee because uh, Jubilee means in different uh, cultures an event that was when where all the debts were cancelled. So what they did is that um, apparently they you can do in the in the following the economical system, you can buy debt really cheap, really really cheap, and uh, you can sell it for uh, much more money. And there's something that is working for the banks and every, uh, 
you know, in the economical system, everybody knows, but the people don't know. So what they are doing is that they promote this campaign to, to, to get funds to, to buy debt. And uh, with that uh, debt that they, they, they bought, they are just uh, cancelling this debt. So they are abolish, abolishing the debt of a lot of people and they don't know which people because it's not nominalized. So it's uh, completely anonymous. What they are doing is just, you know, trying to give a solution for the possibility to solution by yourself, something that is happening a lot that the people is really, that they can afford to pay their, their debts. And if you want to see more, <laughs> because I don't have time to tell you, um, you can go to the Arte Util website that is going to be better in a while, but now it's okay, you can start now. And you have uh, more examples of case, of case studies. And uh, now, if you still have uh, some questions, we can discuss it. And it's done. I'm finishing already. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much.